right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jonathan Kazarian, who is in lovely Miami, Florida. How are you doing, Jonathan? Doing well. Thanks for having me on today. Excellent. And Jonathan is the founder and CEO at Excel Events. Okay. And uh, one of the things that we want to talk about is the virtual experience. Uh, Jonathan's company have, uh, have their own technology. Uh, and what I wanted to talk today about is how you can make the experience of doing, whether it's a virtual sales meeting, whether it's a virtual event, whether it's um, anything, you know, company meetings, whatever it is you're going to do virtually, what are the benefits of it and how can you, how can you really optimize that experience as opposed to looking at it as, oh, well, I can't do it in person right now, so I guess I'll do it virtually, but not really um, not really having great faith in that. I want to reestablish the fact that not only uh, does it have, it has its own real benefits. So not only is it, it's not just a fallback, but it's actually something that has its own benefits and advantages. So maybe we start off, Jonathan, maybe just a quick question and a background on why you started this um, virtual event uh, platform in the first place. What, what drove you to it and why was there nothing there that was sufficient? Yeah, so actually, we started in the fundraising space uh, as a result of a fundraiser I was hosting to benefit Dana-Farber Cancer Institute up in Boston uh, when a family member got, got uh, diagnosed with cancer. And going into that event, I just couldn't find any affordable technology to facilitate the auction and the raffle. So built out a lightweight solution, and, uh, and it worked, and we got great feedback and decided to take that and run with it. And then as the platform expanded, we started to focus more heavily on the ticketing arena and then obviously COVID happened. So we took this as an opportunity to pivot into the virtual space and it's uh, it certainly worked out well. Yeah, so when you, when you first started off and you were looking at other technologies and you started off, I know, in the, in the, um, in the, in the charity or whatever bidding space, um, what was it in particular that was lacking uh, in the current technologies that you wanted to address? Yeah, so it was affordability and user experience. Uh, the platforms that were out there, they just, they weren't taking advantage of the modern technology and they weren't taking advantage of the devices that people have in their pockets and at home. So um, we just looked at that as an opportunity to capitalize on that. So what are some of the things that you have done to increase the user experience and maybe not just with the technology, but maybe with the way you present the way you conduct your events or whatever, what are some lessons that people could learn about how to do it properly? Definitely. So I'll focus this more on the virtual event side of things, less so mm -hmm. in the fundraising, but a right. big piece of it when it comes to evaluating, looking at virtual event platforms is to figure out first, what are you trying to accomplish with this event? Is it a sales kickoff meeting, for example, where you're trying to rally your team? Or is it a user conference where you're also going to be bringing in partners and you want to provide a great experience to those exhibitors? So identifying first and foremost, what are some of your goals is, is the number one piece of it. And then thinking about how you're going to accomplish that experience. And when we think about that, one of the big pieces is having everything under one roof so that you don't have to be picking and choosing different providers and hodgepodging them together into one tool. Yeah, because I mean, I think that's the, that's the other part is, um, and I think it caught a lot of people off guard, you know, when the pandemic kicked in, uh, they either had limited experience of any tools like Zoom or whatever, or as you said, they had to kind of cobble together, cobble together solutions without really having a good idea what they were trying to, what they were trying to achieve. So it sounds to me like this is one of the pain points that you were able to address is, is like bringing everything together in one place so you can focus on the user experience because to be honest if you're gathering different technologies you're trying to cobble things together you're just trying to get the event off the ground um, there's very little room left for you to actually focus on what's the user experience going to be like exactly and again when you're thinking about the user it's not just the attendee it's also those mm -hmm. exhibitors and one of the one of the pieces that we really thought about from day one on the virtual event side of things was um, there was so much skepticism around whether or not sponsoring a virtual event would be worthwhile being an exhibitor at a virtual event. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, let's make sure it is. So 
we attacked that problem by really building out that component of the experience for an exhibitor to ensure that they're collecting leads, that they're creating real interactions and experiences with the attendees, and they're being put in front of the right buyers. Yeah, so what were some of the, when you started this initially, what were some of the things that you did that maybe surprised exhibitors, surprised attendees? Yeah, well, from the attendee perspective, again, it's having everything work and be streamlined uh, and being browser-based. I mean, there's a lot of tools out there that are kind of stuck on top of Zoom and you're switching between a, a desktop app and a browser-based app. Um, but from the exhibitor side of things, it's really giving them everything that they might have within their existing infrastructure. So if you're using like an intercom or a drift chat widget on your tool, building that into our experience, but natively, so they don't have to worry about connecting other tools, being able to see which of the attendees of the event have visited their booth, allowing them to build out that microsite, to have video interaction so they can communicate one-on-one. -on -one. And as compared to in-person event, where you might have, who knows, you know, rub rubber duckies and t-shirts on your table, and every 200th person who walks by grabs one of those. And every 500th, you, you get their business card. Well, now you actually get those leads from everybody who stops by and not just their contact information, but also their interests. What is it that they're looking at? What are they downloading? Instead of they grab a brochure off the table and walk away. And um, so in many ways, it's a richer experience. I mean, for, I mean, for I, sure. I, and maybe even, maybe even for both parties, if you think about it, because... I mean, let's face it. Often, when you wander up to a booth at a, at, at a uh, at a conference, maybe you have a very eager person working that booth, uh, but you're not really in the mood to talk. You just actually literally want to browse, um, or or as you said, maybe you're just one of those people who's doing a quick drive by to grab the rubber ducky off the table and just fill your bag full of tchotchkes. Um, so it seems, in many ways, it's kind of it, it's almost a, a a better filtering process. It is. In the same way that you might walk by that booth and kind of eavesdrop on that conversation that that exhibitor is having with an attendee, you could do the same thing here. And then if you want to engage the exhibitor, you can raise your hand and ask the question and enter into that conversation, or you can just keep walking. So in, in your experience, since you've been doing this um, with feedback from ex exhibitors, have they been surprised at maybe the level of interaction? Maybe that, it, I mean, I, I, as you said, I'm sure a lot of them at the beginning were thinking, okay, nobody's going to come to this. Nobody's going to interact. It's going to be a waste or whatever. What were some of the things that happened in the feedback you got from exhibitors? Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's really right around the lead collection. It's that they in half of a day or a day at home, we're able to gather more leads than they ever were getting by getting on a plane, traveling, going to a venue, you know, maybe having dinner and at a fraction of the cost as well. They stick a BDR in the booth and that BDR is there uh, interacting or through some of the networking components of the platform, interacting with the attendees in a way where it's getting their brand out there. It's incentivizing people to stop by the booth. So uh, or it could be working with the event organizer to sponsor one of the speaking sessions. So mm -hmm. similar experiences that you might have in person, but uh, but expanded and with the data component that's always been lacking with uh, with in person experiences. Yeah, and, and that's a, I think that's a great point, and I think that's one of the things that has always been you know particularly in recent years um, a lot of people have wondered about the return on investment of of conferences, and like you said is. Uh, if you're sending somebody there as an exhibitor, you're paying a lot of money, they're out of pocket for a certain amount of time. And let's face it, in, in many times, the ROI isn't there. I mean, it really, it really doesn't come back. And But what you're saying here is that, that some people are seeing a, a much greater ROI with less cost by doing it virtually. Absolutely. And not just on the exhibitor side, but also the event organizer. If, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, if I'm an event manager for a company and my CMO is asking me, what was the value that we got out of hosting this event that cost us $700,000 to put on? Mm -hmm. I don't have that much data if it's an in-person event. I just don't. There isn't that much data to collect. But now with this, in, with this virtual experience and, and soon to be hybrid experience, there's just going to be so much more information that I can take and go back to my CMO or go back to the CRO or whoever else it might be and say, hey, here are the leads we got. Here are how they interacted. Here's all the information we figured out about our existing customer base. That's an opportunity to upsell them on a new product line or something else that we historically didn't have. Or here's how we deepen relationships with some of our partners by offering them all of these leads that 
we didn't have any insight into before. We didn't know what value they actually got because that's just between the handoff of a business card from that exhibitor to the to the attendee. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, and going going forward, uh, you just mentioned hybrid there. Do you expect a lot more people, even when they can do in-person events, to start to combine it with technology, or at least uh, you know do a, do a good analysis of which is more beneficial, doing it in person or doing it virtually, or as you said, combining it? So do you, in, you envision a lot more kind of hybrid going forward? Yeah, this is a question I was actually answering earlier today as well. So uh, I do. Uh, somebody asked me earlier today, what percentage of historically in-person events I think are going to return to being in-person? And I think what we're going to find is it's still going to be, frankly, a couple of quarters or a couple of years before we start to mm -hmm. see some of those larger profile events return to in-person. But I think the other thing that we're going to learn is that there's quite a few people who either don't feel comfortable attending those events in person or have realized that they don't need to in order to get the value, or their company might not be willing to spend the money on the travel and the ticket, or they just care more about the environment and sustainability and realize that the trade-off isn't there to attend in person. So with all of those four factors, and less attendance at those events in person, it's gonna be even harder to justify the cost of hosting the event in person. And it's gonna be harder to justify the cost of sponsoring that event when my buyers aren't there. Yeah, no, I think those are great points. And I also think there's an interesting thing. And I think, uh, you know, there's a, as a byproduct of the, the pandemic, it's happened to a lot of different areas. But I think, again, this has brought into sharp focus the the value of in-person conferences and, and not just the value, because some of them obviously are extremely valuable. But the format, I mean, in many ways, the format hasn't changed in, in many years. I mean, most of my professional career, I mean, the conferences of I, I go to or have gone to, they follow the same format. They have keynotes, they have breakout sessions, they have, you know, exhibitor booths outside or whatever. But there, was not, there's, there hasn't been anything really innovative in, in general in conferences for a long time. I, uh, I've been watching this TV show called Halt and Catch Fire. And one of the main characters in that went to Comdex in the early 80s. And then in the episode I, I most recently watched, he went back in the late 80s and he walks in to the trade floor in Vegas and he goes, so much has changed, but so much is still the same. And it really is the truth. Yeah. And, and that's why I, I think that um, now is the, you know, is forced upon people to question all of this. And as you said, going forward, there are so many things. There is the travel cost. There's the comfort level that people you know, gathering together, there's the, you know, the environmental cost of, of, of all of that. Um, I think it's a space that has been begging for some kind of innovation. Uh, because like I said, I mean, I think the formats hasn't haven't changed. I don't remember being at a conference recently where it surprised me how it was done or something that I went, wow, that's really cool. This is a totally different experience. It's normally same old, same old. Uh, so would you encourage uh, people out there who maybe have suspended all of their events uh, to start looking at doing things virtually, but not just doing, as I said at the beginning, not just doing things virtually because you can't do them in person, but doing them virtually because you can deliver a new and maybe more surprising, more engaging experience. Yes, absolutely. But to expand on that, it's the experience is crucial, but it's, it's more than just the experience. Mm -hmm. One incredibly common trend we've been seeing, especially with the IPOs of the past quarter or two, is that the companies that are winning are winning because of the community they developed around their product and around their brand. And one of the best ways to develop community is bringing people together with a common interest in your brand, in your company, in what you're doing. And events are the best way to do that. These, these communities, they're global. It's all about getting these people together at the same time, literally a couple of hour point in time where they can interact and communicate with each other and build networks. And as a company, if you can deliver that and now deliver that at a much higher frequency and a much lower cost, it's a really, really strong way to build stickiness with your brand. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Uh, that's an, actually an excellent point because sometimes that's what obviously in-person conferences you know, you know, they 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 promise 
your great networking, you know, meeting people, great community. And, and a lot of that never really materializes because they don't have the mechanisms really in place to do it or they don't have a process to really help people. But when you come into a virtual world, actually facilitating networking, facilitating community and all of that, if you do it, if you do it right, I mean, the, the technology really does aid you here. Absolutely. And I mean, there's also those times you've met somebody, you've had a beer with someone, you're like, this guy's super interesting. I, you know, really, we could do something together. And they disappear. That's it. Yeah. You don't even connect with them on LinkedIn. And now you have an audit trail of that. You know who these people are. I mean, virtual events, these platforms can be almost like that CRM of your own life. Mm -hmm. Or worse, you have a few beers and you can't even remember who they were. <laughs> that can happen. <laughs> And, and that often happens at conferences too. No, but it's a it's it is an excellent point. Is that is that unless you're unless you're frantically writing down notes or making notes or taking pictures of people or photograph you're taking a photo of their their card immediately and it, it can be very difficult to to track people in those kind of environments. And here you obviously have the you have the the trail immediately. Um. So before we finish up, uh, Jonathan, what is your prediction for? virtual events going forward? Where do you see all of this going? And what are some of the innovations we can look forward to? Yeah, so so virtual events over the first half of 2020 were really just looked at as a replacement to in-person. Mm -hmm. Now what we're seeing is this restructuring of event calendars and event programs to encompass some of the ideas I was speaking about, about developing community, about engaging, uh, creating more engagement and interaction. And that is what we're seeing companies trend to. It's a higher frequency of events, bringing people together more often. And in terms of what we're going to see in the future, it's that, it's these virtual events becoming platforms of community. They're becoming content hubs of information. There's going to be master, you know, master passes where you can go back and, and access historical information. Um, on the experience side of things, there's been quite a bit of, of innovation in, in video technology. Uh, obviously we're gonna see more uh, augmented reality, probably for the hybrid event experience, virtual reality for the virtual experience. But I think we're still a little bit early on that, probably a couple of years out before that becomes the norm, partially because people don't have the hardware at home to support mm -hmm. it. Um, but there's going to be a lot of innovation and it's going to be a really interesting space. Um, but for now, my, my number one recommendation would be if you haven't participated in a virtual event to find one that's of interest to you and to do so, uh, hopefully as a exhibitor or sponsor, uh, if not actually hosting one on your own. And if you need a hand with that, we're certainly here to help. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, listen, Jonathan, this has been great. Uh, all of Jonathan's information will be below this video. But before we go, do please tell people a little bit more about you and your company and your platform. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the company is Excel Events, and uh, we are here to help you facilitate that virtual experience that you want to create at whatever frequency you want to do so. The platform itself encompasses everything that you need to host and run a conference, a trade show, a networking event of either 20 people or 20,000 or more. It doesn't matter the size or scale. Uh, we've worked with it all. And uh, if anybody's interested in getting more information, visit our website, excelevents.com. We pride ourselves on our 24 seven live support. Uh, send us a message, there's a little chat widget in the bottom right, a real person will respond in a couple of seconds. And, uh, and let us know how we can help you out. Yeah, and I would uh, I would encourage you to go check it out. I think this is definitely going to be a large part of the future, uh, both from an experience point of view, from what you can do, from a cost point of view, from so many different angles that I think it's 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 important that you check things like this out because I do think that, as you said, people were good with yeah yeah it's a replacement it's a temporary thing. But going forward, I think that uh, attendees and, as you said, exhibitors, I think are going to expect a lot more from virtual events. So now is a good time to start looking at technologies like Excel events and how they can help you to deliver something very meaningful and, and, and valuable to your customers. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks again, Jonathan, for joining us today. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.